Hey YouTube, it is your beekeeper here. Today's video is going to be narrated because apparently something in my original actual transcript has uh, triggered the sensor bots and has demonetized my videos. This is the fourth time I've tried to upload this video, but we'll get more into that later. Let's take a close look at this home-built shot press. And I have it currently set outside and it's covered with this Kraus stainless steel sink jacket i guess if you want to call it i did a remodel on a kitchen about a year and a half ago and this super fancy sink that the people bought came in this wonderful bag and that bag is a breathable material very similar to a car cover and i remember grabbing that and saying wow this is really cool i'll do something with it and it sat in a shelf for the last year and a half but look at it it perfectly fits over this homemade uh, hydraulic shop press now just a quick recap this thing is homemade it was made approximately 1957 by my recently deceased hoarder friend and his father when he was a teenager. He was about 16, as I understand, when he built this. Dad was a, his dad was a, an aircraft airplane mechanic working for one of the major airlines. And this entire thing is put together with aviation bolts. That's what I'm describing here. Every nut and bolt has been drilled for a safety wire or is a castle nut that can house or accept the safety wire, I should say. Uh, but on the other side, nothing matches. It's just kind of whatever came home in his pocket. Aviation industry standards require that nuts and bolts be replaced at certain time intervals. Those nuts and bolts and washers would be thrown into buckets that were theoretically recycled. Um, or the uh, crafty mechanics would take them home in their lunch pails. And apparently he brought home a lot of these old expired nuts and bolts in his lunch pail. Nothing matches, but it is put together. Quite well I believe it is extremely sturdy and I could park my vehicles on top of it the issue that I'm having and I'm describing right here is that this top plate is not level see that difference the top plate is not parallel that's the word I'm looking for It's not parallel to the press plate originally I had thought we had knocked it out of alignment when we were loading it in the truck but looking at the orange paint nothing has been slipped nothing has been shafted shifted as I'm looking at me describing the shaft, the shaft here does not sit 90 degrees to the, the press bars on the bottom there. And I'll show you how far out things are uh, with my handy dandy level here. You'll see the top level is almost a full bubble off. I went really quick on that section of video there. And then the bottom one's just, the, the bubble is just touching the right line. It turns out, I do take the tape measure later, it is about three eighths of an inch difference. So the concrete I'm describing here that the concrete is seriously sloped away from the house and towards the front of the house to allow water away from the house when it rains and I do have a block under that left side of the foot there um, but it's not I wasn't that concerned about getting it perfectly level but I did want it I didn't want it feeling like it was tippy like it was tippy so what are we gonna do today we're gonna try to loosen these nuts and bolts we're gonna try to pull this thing square I think um, we'll see you'll just have to watch the video and see how it all turns out but apparently I've said something I've said something in this video there's Cleo Cleo here's the neighbor uh, we've got some new neighbors moving in across the street and they were banging around in their U-Haul and she was quite concerned this is the end of the handle and I won't say what the handle is for because I think that's what's getting me nailed on this censoring but that little aluminum Hand, uh, knob on the end there was a was the very first lathe project that my recently deceased hoarding friend built when he was about 15 years old. Um, he built it for something else actually and then he made it fit for this thing here but he, he knurled it and he, and he cut it up and on the lathe out of a chunk of scrap aluminum and he was uh, pretty proud that was his first lathe project so I'm pretty excited that I have it I'm able to use it it's got a nice feel to it. That green thing that the handle is stuck into I do believe that is the word, as I said. Um, I said it several times in the video, and I believe that is what's causing this thing to be demonetized by the sensor bots. Yeah, right there, you see it? You see it on that label, the four letter word there? Um, anyhow, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to remove this manually operated hydraulic pressure cylinder. And, oh, I dropped the camera, did you see that? That was in real time, that thing did a quadruple flip and slam into the ground there. Um, I'm not gonna, you can hear it. It was actually a pretty cool thump when it hit the ground, but I, I'm not using any of the original audio because this is the fourth time I've uploaded this video. 
I'm a busy fella. Oh, hey, check that out. See, there's the mismatched nuts and bolts. That's the collar that holds the top of the manually operated green hydraulic cylinder unit. Um, that guy right there. That's what holds it to the frame. Uh, you know, I'm a busy fella. I work 60 hours a week. I don't have time to continue to upload and re-upload and re-edit videos. The same stupid video that's only going to make me 36 cents in AdSense revenue. Uh, but it's a matter of principle. I don't like it when people tell me I can't do something. And for whatever reason, they feel my G-rated videos are not worthy of monetization. So it is what it is. I completely dumped out all the fluid because the fluid was really dirty. It was really dark and dirty. And I put about six or seven ounces, eight ounces. I forget exactly much, but I put it until the line. And then I did the old jack up, squish down several times and bled the air out of it. Here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a fine tune adjustment with my Leatherman and a snap on adjustable wrench. The crushed sleeve on top there, the, the nut that crushes down the top seal was loose. And when I had this device, this press device laying flat in the back of my pickup, a, a lot of hydraulic fluid leaked out of that manually operated green cylindrical device, piddled into the bed of my pickup, out the drain holes, and made a big oil slick in my driveway. So that kind of bummed me out a bit. But just several taps of the snap-on uh, six-inch adjustable wrench and my Leatherman, it made that thing tighten up quite nicely and it doesn't leak anymore so i'm bleeding the air out of the system here we're going to take this manually operated green cylindrical device place it back into the frame and put it under some pressure the only pressure i could find immediately were these cutoffs these are two by six redwood cutoffs i just a few days before i did this had completed a deck uh, on a house it's a third story deck and i had to access the entire thing from ladders it was really quite ridiculous but i'm running out of sunny months i'm running out of daylight you know days where the daylight lasts past six o'clock and i've been in a mad rush to get the deck done i've just completed a bathroom remodel and today literally october 19th uh literally here in about a half hour i'm out of the house and we're going to start a kitchen remodel and in theory, that is the last big project that should take me through the third or fourth week in November. <coughs> Excuse me. And that should be my last big project of the year. I'm hoping to get some time downtime because that is what it is. So I'm taking this ram and I'm putting it under a pretty decent amount of pressure and it's pressing nicely. There's no hesitation. There's no feeling that I'm maxing out this manually operated hydraulic cylindrical device that's placed within this orange frame, that one right there. There's a little bit of schmutz on that. You see, it's just, that's just residual dirt that was in the system. I didn't clean it. I didn't flush it out with anything. I just drained it and put new, new uh, hydraulic, I don't want to say the word, oil in there. I almost said it. I almost said it. And then for the fourth time, this video is going to be demonetized for their automated sensors are not playing nice so i took this thing and i rammed it through the edge the, well it's not a live edge but the the edge of this piece of redwood it's not the most dense piece of wood but it's what i had handy it did put a decent pressure on the system it held pressure because there would be just a little bit of spring back from this wood and it's doing quite nicely so um from a hydraulic standpoint this shop press is fantastic, but I'll go ahead and maybe I just squashed it. And it's actually pretty cool, squeaky, cracky, poppy audio of this steel squishing there. But I, I again, I, I've deleted the, or I muted the, um, the original soundtrack because I'm just tired of trying to edit out certain words, thinking that maybe that's what the, the sensor has. I, I've changed the, title twice of this video thinking that maybe there was something in the video title that was offensive <laughs> to whatever the uh, sensor bots think is offensive but so that's the carnage did a fantastic job on that two by six pretty pretty excited so now let's go ahead and loosen the nuts and bolts but before we do that i did want to see what this and i'm just kind of considering it as a consumable piece of the shop press 
I can turn this easily on the lathe. I can make a new one that would custom fit whatever my application by diameter size. You know, if I want to push universal joints out of the drive shaft for the Suburban, I could cut a tip down that would fit the cap just nicely. This one's been used quite a bit. You can see it's mushroomed. And ultimately what I'm going to do before I start using this press is I'm going to chuck that up in the lathe. I'm going to turn the face true and I'm just going to dress up that mushroomed edge. But it would be kind of neat. I could make several of these depending on my application that would fit into that pocket there. And it's just slip fit in there. I ended up taking that set screw all the way out because it wasn't coming loose. I thought maybe it was threaded or I don't know. Now I just know I need to turn it a couple couple turns counterclockwise to loosen it up and then that, that consumable piece will drop right out. So let's put it back and let's listen to some fine music, which will probably get me a copyright strike even though I built it myself on my computer. We'll be right back. I'll just sip a tasty warm beverage. It's 5.14 in the morning on October 19th. Oh, I got a big mug of hot green tea. So I was having, what I was trying to do, I was having issues with trying to get that thing to square up. And I, so I took a piece of, this is one inch thick plate steel. And I was trying to put pressure on the system. I had loosened all nine of those bolts, three, six, 12 of those, three, six, nine, 12 of those bolts, excuse me, I can add. And it, uh, it, it didn't push it back up. So I have to get in there and oval those holes, I suppose, to get this frame square. And I sit here and I think to myself, boy, is it just, is it more than it needs to be? You see, it doesn't contact the steel plate. I know the steel plate is flat. Am I overthinking this? What do you guys think? Give me a comment in the, in the section down there. It just, it, it bugs me that this thing doesn't contact the press surface perfectly perpendicular. Um, I put a square up there and it's off. So I need to do a little more work on this, but we'll get to it. Gotta go, gotta run. See